Normally, a pinch pot is created by forming a ball out of clay, creating an opening in the middle with your thumb, and pinching and stretching the ball to change its shape. The body shape we are aiming to create is more like the body shapes of Sophie Woodrow sculptures. By using the method you are going to be shown, your sculpture's body will be taller in height and less rounded. Push down with your thumb in the middle of your cube. Do not push your thumb all the way down to the bottom of your pinch pot. Pull the clay up with your index fingers. This will make the bottom half of your pinch pot more rounded and thinner than the top part. To make a successful pinch pot, all parts need to be the same thickness. By adding a small amount of water to my fingers, I am able to reduce the amount of friction my hands are feeling as I am pulling up the clay. Gently roll the pinch pot back and forth on the board to make the sides more rounded. To flatten the top of your pinch pot, gently tap it on the wooden board. The top of both pinch pots will need to be flat so that they can be joined together later. The thickness of the walls of your pinch pot should be the same thickness as your thumb. You will need to create a second pinch pot the same size as your first. This second pinch pot will be the top of your sculpture body. After you have created each pinch pot, you will need to score your initials and form group into the base of your pinch pot. If you don't put your initials at the bottom of your pinch pot, it might get lost amongst other students' work. The next techniques we will need to learn are slipping, scoring and marrying. I have a pot of slurry, which is a combination of clay and water, which creates a glue-like material. If you don't have any slurry, this is okay. You can use water and a paintbrush, or water and your fingertips. To score clay, you will need any modeling tool that can make marks. Using the tool you have been given, score the areas using the cross-hatching method. When scoring clay, more marks are better than less. Once your shape has been scored, you need to slip it. That means adding a little bit of slurry onto the scoring to act as a glue. When you are slipping, wetter is better. 
The more water between the clay particles, the more they can slide around and intermingle when clay pieces are next to each other. When you're ready, firmly press the clay pieces together. Using a clay modeling tool, I am scraping down the clay to make sure both pieces are firmly joined together. After, I just use my finger to blend the clay together and smooth the texture. Using a straight-sided metal kidney, I was able to straighten the sides of my sculpture's body. Using a potter's needle or any sharp clay tool, score a line that shows where you will need to score the clay. Using a paintbrush, apply slip over the scored areas. When you're ready, firmly press the pieces together. Using a clay modeling tool, I am scraping down the clay to make sure both pieces are firmly joined together. After, I just use my finger to blend the clay together and smooth the texture. Place the clay on a piece of canvas to prevent it sticking. Then position your guide sticks either side of the clay to the width required. Rolling between guides results in a slab with an even thickness. Roll out the clay, rotating and flipping occasionally. To smooth and compress the rolled out clay, use a rubber kidney tool, working in different directions and taking care to maintain a consistent thickness. To avoid leaving marks in your slab, when using a rubber kidney, slowly place it on the clay and as you pull it off the clay, do it quickly. Using a potter's needle, I drew a mirror line down the middle of my slab. By doing this, I was able to cut out symmetrical ear shapes. Something is symmetrical when it is the same on both sides. Using the tool you have been given, score a line around the areas where you want to attach your body parts. Using the tool you have been given, score the areas using the cross hatching method. Score both the body parts and the areas you want them to go. Once your shape has been scored, you need to slip it.
To make sure the clay pieces are firmly joined together, use smaller pieces of clay and press it into the gaps. I used the rounded end of a wooden modelling tool to help with this. Using a wet thumb, I compressed the smaller clay pieces into the gaps. Using a sharp clay tool, create two very simple eyes. Do not push the sharp tool so far it makes a hole in the back of the head. Next, you will need to spray your board so it is ready to make coils on. Create a coil, find a large enough piece of clay and roll it backwards and forth underneath your hands, making sure the clay makes a complete 360 degree rotation. As you move your hands further apart from each other as you are rolling, the coil will become longer as you stretch the clay. Roll your coil from your fingertips to your wrist, keeping your fingers spread open. To fix a thin section, roll the coil and move your hands closer together to push the clay in. Using a sharp tool, Lightly score around the areas you know you would need to cross hatch later. Once your shape has been scored, you need to slip it. To reinforce the joins and for neatness, fill small gaps with tiny pieces of clay and blend them with a tool or your finger. Using the tool you have been given, score the areas using the cross-hatching method. Once your shape has been scored, you need to slip it.
after your sculpture has been dried out for a week, it will be put into the kiln to be bisfired. To finish your sculpture off, you will need to apply two layers of opaque white glaze. Opaque glaze is the opposite of transparent glaze. A window is transparent, whilst the white dinner plate isn't. Try to remember which areas you have already painted so you do not have some areas with more than two layers on it. Wait for each layer to dry fully before you add more glaze on top. You will know if it's dry because the glaze will be powdery instead of wet and sloppy. Use a smaller brush to apply glaze to hard to reach and smaller areas.